Welcome back. We've got Mr. Bob Courtney, the Madison Mayor here for Mayor's Minutes. And Bob, you're, you've had a big day already today, haven't you? It's been very busy. So we have a <laughs> city council meeting tonight. So that always, um, you know, creates a lot of activity in advance to, to get prepared for that because we want to make sure that we're delivering, you know, uh, really good services to the community. And you want to make sure you're, you're on task and everything's in order before you get there. So you've had a lot to do this morning there's, already. There's a lot of preparation, not just on my part, but yes. the entire staff's part. Yes. And uh, they do an excellent job. I, I just want to say, again, I'm so fortunate to work with all the great people with the City of Madison. The staff and employees are just fantastic. Best people I've ever worked with. And you're very lucky. I am. <laughs> that, it takes the whole team to make it work. Teamwork, so, teamwork makes the dream work. That's right. <laughs> Perfect. So now we'll get right into this. There's some cool things going on with Main Street. Mm -hmm. So what are some of those that you've, you've actually implemented? So one of the things that, that, that really has been a long-term project um, is redesigning Main Street. And effective July the 1st, the city through a road transfer agreement with uh, NDOT uh, in, that was executed back in 2014. We amended it and, and uh, to, to add some provisions with NDOT prior to taking over the road in July. But what that allows is Main Street now to become the local access road for the first time really in, in, in modern history for Madison. And really what that means is we can really focus on design, traffic calming, crosswalk safety, economic development, and, and really raising the quality of life and the standard of the quality of life for everybody downtown. And so we're really excited about it. And uh, you know, the first action that, that we have taken is to start moving our heavy truck traffic off of Main Street now that it's a local access road. But over the course of the last 35 years, you know, there has been an intentional development of a truck route around the city of Madison. Right. Uh, it just had not really been implemented until now. And with the complete, near completion of the bridge approach, the new bridge, and then in, in combination with the four lane Highway 62, also known as Clifty Drive here in Madison, mm -hmm. it really gave us the opportunity to say, now's the time as we are starting to embark on spending literally millions of dollars to bring uh, Main Street uh, back up to par. Uh, we felt it was important to start moving that heavy truck traffic off. So uh, I want to thank all the businesses and, and the partnerships with the local trucking companies because without them, um, you know, there's probably four to 5,000 trucks going up and down Main Street every single month. And we've already noticed a material difference just in the third week of this particular campaign. Well, that'll make a big difference as far as it deteriorating later too. Once you do all that work, you won't have that truck traffic on Main Street causing it to deteriorate quicker. Well, if we're going to spend so. literally millions of dollars and we want to focus on safety, right. as well as all the other attributes that I mentioned, it's just imperative that you know the heavy truck traffic, not yes. all truck traffic, I do want to make that clarification, yes. it isn't all truck traffic. Right. So there will be exceptions for uh, uh, lighter weight truck traffic, local deliveries, school buses, tourist buses, uh, municipal uh, recreational type vehicles, things that we know have to traverse in and out of our community right. and and so they'll they'll be all over the cro right. uh, all across the city and and, and that and, includes and medical nature. vehicles too right? emergency and yes. medical vehicles too but it's also a, an opportunity for us to remind the community that we've always had weight limits on all of our city streets the entire community for example uh, and the the typical weight limits 10 tons which is 20,000 pounds but there are certain parts of, of uh, the city of Madison where it's only five tons and so uh, with the improvement in in our public safety and with Chief Wallace's leadership we'll talk about that in a minute we're also going to be able to enforce these ordinances a little bit stronger so we right. want to we want to calm the traffic focus on economic development improve and modernize our crosswalk safety and uh, just really uh, enhance the quality of life for tourism business owners and and residential neighborhoods here in downtown Madison that's awesome that would be that'll be so nice I can tell you yeah. I can sit downtown at the coffee shop now and have coffee with a friend on the sidewalk and we can hear each other talk so I'm like yes <laughs> It's uh, it, it. it really is a game changer, and, and for for those that that have endured it uh, all downtown, and you know, I will say that Highway 421 still runs across the bridge and on the east end of downtown yes. Madison and on Main Street. So, Highway 421 still ha will have those uh, mm -hmm. higher weight limits that uh, NDOT allows. But for the rest of rest of the city, right. and for Jefferson Street West 
we'll be able to um, um, enforce lower lower weight limits. That is great. Well, while we're on Main Street, there's going to be a big thing with paving in mm -hmm. the city. And how's that going <clears> to <throat> How's that going to affect so, and happen? There's actually two things. So we actually received one of the largest uh, community crossing grants the city has received. Uh, we bid that uh, project out just uh, about a month or so ago. So in around, probably in about two or three weeks, we'll embark on one of the largest citywide paving projects uh, uh, that we've experienced, about $1.4 million worth of new paving. And that is in addition to the work that we know and anticipate for for Main Street, so uh, you know, estimates are that uh, you know we're facing multi-million dollars of expenses to upgrade Main Street, and so that's going to be a longer-term project, probably relying on some federal highway dollars to make that happen. But it's going to start with the uh, really consensus building uh, community-wide on what we would like uh, downtown Main Street to become. Now that is that it is not a state highway for the first time in modern history. Oh, you've got a lot of work ahead of you. It's great stuff. Yeah. Exciting stuff. You, you like a challenge, though. Well, we, we uh, were very intentional and methodical about our goals and objectives and key initiatives. Uh, like I said, we have a great team at the City of Madison who are out there executing strategies. City Council has been extremely supportive on appropriation do appropriating dollars mm -hmm. for uh, the investment that we're going to be making. And, right. you know, all of this investment is intended to deliver results, uh, whether it be attracting additional investment in our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. uh, uh, attracting um, in private capital for the start of small businesses or large and medium-sized businesses in our community. So it's all necessary and it's part of the process uh, uh, to go through in order to just make Madison the, the best place it can be to work, live, uh, visit, and uh, raise family. Yes. I, I think y'all are Y'all are doing a great job. Thank you. You're, you're really working hard. We're trying. Hard. We're working hard. Yes. And then now we're back to s some of the fun things in Madison, which is the Crystal Beach Pool. Mm -hmm. And there's some things coming up with it. You're all going to be making some changes there? Well, we did. Um, you know, a, a couple of months ago, the, the question that was on our minds and a lot of mayors across the state of Indiana was, how do we uh, reopen our public facilities yes. in light of stay-at-home orders or you know Governor Holcomb's back on back on track uh, guidance for example health department requirements how do we do it safely in light of a, of a global pandemic and I you know a lot of a lot of cities across the state just kind of pressed the pause button and said well let's let's yes. hope 2021 is a better year uh, what we did was say, well, let's make sure 2020 is the best year it can be. 2021 is going to be the best year it can be as well. But we spent a lot of time bringing all of our facilities back online, and that included Crystal Beach, it included Rucker, it included the Brown Gym, it included all of our sports programs, for example. Along with the CDC guidelines, you figured yes. out a way to make all this happen and be in compliance with the CDC. There, there, uh, in my opinion, uh, there's always a way if you put enough energy toward it and thought behind it and consensus building. We know what the guidelines are and the framework should be. So really it, it comes down to um, how important is it to our community to get these these um, public assets uh, and make them available to the community. So Crystal Beach, frankly, was the most important one because it was one of the first assets that we wanted to reopen and we know what legacy it has for our entire community and it's gone well the summer's gone well and I, and I want to express my gratitude to the entire parks department the parks board our parks department management the staff there uh, and Crystal Beach in particular, Debbie Snodgrass, who is the manager there, the lifeguards, uh, the people working in concession stands and, and um, at the front desk and a maintenance crew, for example, that makes sure that it is just a, uh, a shining spot for the city of Madison. We did announce last week that we're going to extend the season uh, all the way through Labor Day weekend. That hasn't been done in about a decade. And uh, it was important for us, again, to do things that are a little bit harder. Uh, we're in this job not because it's easy, but because we're here to make, make the right calls uh, and even when the situation is tough. And it was important to us to just keep things going as normal as possible. Kids need a place to be kids. And yes. uh, that's the basketball courts, the parks, the playgrounds, the swimming pool, the ball fields, the soccer fields. It's everywhere. 
And there's nothing more important than trying to bring, um, you, you know, the quality of life that we enjoy as adults here and make sure that our kids understand that they're important to us too. Yeah, their, their mental stability it depends on the things that they're able to do and interact <clears throat> with other people. Right. They're, not, they're not able to be locked up in a house and stay that way and, and be healthy. They, uh, it's, it's healthier to be outdoors and active and it's safer to be outdoors and so uh, yes. you know we took all of those considerations uh, and um, formed a strategy and we've been executing the strategy you know really since uh, the beginning of the summer when everything started reopening. Well that, <coughs> that's another thing we have um, going on you're talking about the events mm -hmm. you know with the pool opening up that's kind of considered an event mm -hmm. but there are some events in Madison that have been canceled because of all the COVID and the issues that have come along with it but you all have actually found a way to make certain things happen. What are those? Well, and not, and not just the city of Madison, but our tourism partners. Yes. You know, Madison Main Street, for example, continuing to work hard to deliver music in the park. Last weekend's music in the park that was moved to Bicentennial Park was fantastic. Um, we've got the five to the five, uh, which is literally developing into a, a, a premier uh, vintage hydroplane racing event that's going to happen in September. Things like that would not happen without a lot of dedication from people across the community. We have the, the, the recently formed Madison Music Movement, for example, that's bringing live music and this the culture of uh, Madison being Indiana's music city, for example, bringing that to our community to bring people out and have some fun things to do and also promote tourism. It's about, it's about bringing people to Madison. Yes. And it's not only about bringing the tourists here, but it's also about just demonstrating what exceptional quality of life that we have available to us here in the city of Madison. Uh, Hannah Fagan, our community relations director, has been relentless in making sure that we have great events uh, to do. We did the fireworks show, which was extremely well attended. Right. We did that in partnership with local businesses downtown that, that sponsored their own events. We're doing the same thing with our planning for Halloween. We're going to and we're moving Red, White and Boo, for example, out of Brown Gym. We're bringing that up to Main Street. We'll have a petting zoo. Uh, we're already planning things for the Christmas celebration. So, you know, we actually just want to demonstrate that not everything has to cancel. No. Um, if you put a lot of thought into it and, you know, you look at what your crowd sizing is going to be, you look at your venue space, you and, you know, you coordinate with Governor Holcomb's uh, back on track right. and guidelines, the health department guidelines, CDC guidelines. You know, my recommendation to everybody is don't press the pause button. Look for ways to say yes, even if that means you have to modify the event and scale it back so that it is appropriate. Madison depends so much on tourism for its local economy. We really can't afford to press the pause button right. casually. Sometimes you have to press the pause button. But we need to be really, really thoughtful about what we are hosting and what we are canceling because our businesses, our niche uh, shops, our specialty shops, right. antique malls, restaurants, uh, drinking establishments, uh, our entire community depends on tourism in part for our local economy. And in 2018, the latest estimates that we had about the impact on tourism, tourism to the city of Madison, it was over $40 million in 2018 alone. And we know that we know that it's down this year, but um, when we're looking at these events, we need to look beyond just the event itself and the fact that it does have consequences to the broader community. Right. So I just ask everybody before they cancel an event, uh, be, and I know they are, be as thoughtful as they can and look at it as what is the impact to the community overall, the health of our community and the health of our economy, both our are uh, primary considerations that have to be uh, considered. Well, sometimes with those events, sometimes they just get a space that's bigger so you can space people out. Right. And then other times it might be you just want them all to go in the same direction. Well, in downtown Madison, downtown Madison, and even on the hilltop, we have fantastic parks. Um, we have uh, downtown. We have the entire riverfront, which oh, yeah. is a which is a an awesome amenity for us to host festivals at. We have Bicentennial Park. And again, we can we can do it safely. We can social distance. We can still encourage people to, um, you know, wear masks and follow proper hygiene, for example, and do the things that will keep everybody safe. Um, it's worked so far. Uh, I think the health of our community 
uh, community-wide is uh, fantastic. It's actually one of the best uh, in the state of Indiana. And to me, that data says we're doing something right. right. And it's not by accident. I have been told before that we've just been lucky. And I disagree with that assessment because with all of the thousands of contacts that have occurred across the community, and I mean tens of thousands, either in our stores or across our community, it's tens of thousands of ca casual contacts uh, to, to be where we are after almost six months of this pandemic with less than 190 total cumulative positive cases. In Jefferson cases County, in not Jer just Madison. In Jefferson County. Right. Um, I think bodes really well for the behavior of I our community. So, so I think I think they deserve more credit than what they've been given. I, I think you're exactly right. Because if they weren't doing what they should, then our numbers would be a lot higher. You know, everybody I, I, uh, I talk with, they're being cautious. And, and that form of caution comes in different ways. Uh, some people may, may think that it's not cautious enough. Others may think that it's too cautious. <clears throat> but everybody has a responsibility for their own health. And, uh, and, and to be safe, and also take into consideration where you're going to be and the, and the health and safety of everyone around us, and particularly where we're talking about outdoor events. Right. We can do it safely. Indoor, crowded indoor events is a completely different subject, but uh, our, our overall total cumulative positive case rate is uh, very low, and it's one of the best in the county. I'm sorry, it's one of the best in the state. Jefferson County is one of the lowest positive case right. rates. And we're still, uh, we're still trucking along and trying to make things happen across the community. I do want to mention one more thing, and that is on July 21st, uh, City of Madison opened its own free uh, testing center in partnership oh, with, right. with Optum and yeah. the Indiana State Department of Health. It's been tremendously successful. In less than four weeks, we've tested over 1,000 people. And we just made arrangements through, again, through our partnership with Governor Holcomb's office and the Indiana State Department of Health to leave that testing center open uh, now until October the 2nd. So oh, wow. we believe firmly yeah. that broad testing uh, empowers us with that information. And so we're continuing to invite everybody to come down. It's free and you don't have to be from Jefferson County. If you're in town, stop by. Um, but we want to see as many people get tested. We've tested in total, Jefferson County tests are, are approaching the 4,000 mark now. And I think that's fantastic. But, you know, there's still 30, 33, 34,000 people in Jefferson County. So, you know, we've barely tested over 10% of our county population. But if what we have, if the data we do have is indicative of the broader community, then uh, Madison and Jefferson County, I think you're doing extremely well. We're going to move on to something totally different, mm -hmm. and that is the police department. Okay. We've talked about them a little bit in this conversation, but there are some things that are, some of the officers have done some magnificent things that people don't always know about, and what are those? Well, last city council meeting, we swore in two new officers, right. um, and then we also gave uh, 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 medals of valor and commendations to several more officers, literally for heroism. And if you get a chance to look at last city council meeting, we actually played the video from the body cam of one of our officers. Uh, two of our officers were involved in literally a split second decision that saved a, a person's life on the Ohio River Bridge. Take a look at that, and if you, if hopefully you walk away with the same feeling I I did. A, you're proud. You're proud of Madison and its police department. You're proud of the training, the leadership that they have. More importantly, you're proud of the compassion that these officers showed a person that was probably facing, you know, one of his darkest moments in his life when he was considering end ending his life. They put their lives at risk to save that individual, and they did it. They did it compassionately, professionally. They, it just goes to show you the training uh, that these individuals have in order to operate uh, so swiftly that way. And, and they did it also transparently because mm -hmm. a few months ago we, we adopted right. Uh, an NSOP that required all of our pol police officers to uh, have wearable body cameras now and and so we took that experience and we've moved it to forming a public safety steering committee uh, which is made up of uh, several citizens across our community who have been going through now for the last several weeks all of our standing standard operating procedures to see what we can do to improve our goal 
uh, and, uh, and Chief Wallace's goal is to make the city of Madison the safest community in the state of Indiana. How do we do that? We do that very intentionally and methodically by having metrics and measurement standards, the best training, uh, and not being um, afraid to learn from uh, past experiences, for example, and, and also with community engagement. That's the one thing that I love about Madison is how accessible and engaging our community is, whether it be needing to speak with the mayor's office or our city council people or our board of public works or police merit board, our police department, all of the many committees and volunteers that help support all of the initiatives of the city of Madison. Um, wouldn't be done without just uh, you know the size of community that we have and that that openness that we have to to engage with everyone and I think that again is uh, is a bright spot that that enhances quality of life in Madison. Right. Well, you wouldn't know some of the issues unless they told you because you don't live on every street or every block or next door to every neighbor. So people from the community have to come and tell you guys what they need or what's right. going on or. Well, we also have the neighborhood watch groups, for example. Right. Um, but the, we're leveraging those eyes and ears across the community. And uh, Chief Wallace, I want to give, give him and Major McKay a lot of credit because with their leadership, uh, I will say that safety is probably the best that it's ever been in the city of Madison under their leadership. Uh, we've actually made some significant improvements with the way that we handle evidence that's allowed us now to redirect resources. So we have four full-time detectives now doing investigative work. We have more police officers patrolling the street. We're budgeting for additional investment in uh, Madison Police Department and Madison Fire Department for 2021. So things are definitely heading in the right direction. And it doesn't happen by accident. It happens because you have a, you have you a, have plan, a plan, you have a strategy, uh, you have good communi communication with uh, the leaders of those various different departments. And they're all on board with uh, you know what what our vision is for the city of Madison. They're all working together, and I think that's what you notice here. It's not that one entity wants to do one thing and another wants to do a different thing. It's everybody works together to make the plan come together. Uh, so. I think it's. Um, I'm really proud of my my management team, and I'm really proud of all of the staff across the city because they work extremely hard to bring to bring these services to the community and. Um, you know, I know that, that nobody's perfect, but and when we hear about a problem, we attack it right away. Right. Sometimes these are quick fixes. Uh, we pick up some quick wins. Sometimes they, they take longer, particularly if it's a change in policy or takes a larger financial uh, commitment because, you know, it's, it's only August and we've already been working on the 2021 budget for a month. Right. And, um, and so we start that process six months in advance and we're already looking toward you know, 2021 and 2022 for for key initiatives. Well, you have to be prepared. <clears throat> you, you can't go into it and start preparing during it. You have to be prepared before it happens. You know, leaders have a vision and a plan. We've been focusing on community safety, economic opportunity, quality of life initiatives from the very beginning, and it's about execution. And it's about, um, I will also say that, and I've said this a few times, some of the best ideas don't come from City Hall. They come from everybody else that's around the city that, that come from different walks of life, different experiences. And we have a tremendous talent pool for the size of our community that is uh, contributing to the quality of life in Madison. Mm -hmm. I keep coming back to quality of life because well, that's the, that's if the you see thing. what's happening all across around us, for example, in bigger cities, um, I, think, I think some people that live in some of those bigger communities would just literally are they're starving for a lifestyle like what we have in the city of Madison. Well you can't beat it, I'm gonna tell you. I I could like to run at night. Have I convinced so. you to move to Indiana yet? <laughs> I'm I'm close enough I can just <laughs> run across the bridge and then run down Main Street and yes, back. Sure. So but that's nice because a lot of places you can't run at night. You know, there's there's a lot of things that kinda get the the lighting or the sidewalks right. aren't good or Maybe there's certain things you don't want to be around, but you can run down Main Street and run down one side and then run back up the other and you're fine. So You can yeah. add just about any street across the city is the same way. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we do need to work on traffic safety. Speeding's a big problem across the community. We're evaluating, you know, where to, where to, try, to how, try to manage that a little bit better to calm the traffic down. Sometimes, 
you know the the inertia is to be, is to put a stop sign or stop light and and uh, that doesn't always work so we're looking at really more modern ways that traffic for traffic calming uh, other than uh, speed limits and stop signs and and it's a partnership across with the state too because right. you know we have four state highways that run through the city of Madison. Yes. And uh, NDOT plays an important role in that because of those four highways that carry tens of thousands of vehicles across our community. A lot of them are here for tourism, they're here for shopping, uh, they're here to um, deliver goods and services either through Madison or, at, or here at Madison or from Madison where it's originating. But you know we have such for our community i mean we have a fantastic airport we have our railroad we have 27 parks across our community we have 60 some odd miles of streets um, and uh, we have the beautiful ohio riverfront that is a multi-million dollar uh, investment for the city we have a state park we have two golf courses I'm leaving some things out, but we have good Not public. Much. We have good public schools, good private schools. Right. You know the support from our uh, from our faith uh, leaders here in Madison and Jefferson County is phenomenal, and we're part of Jefferson County, which also brings m even more heritage to the city of Madison. Right. And so, you know, um, we think that we're actually in a very very good position to take advantage of what we believe is going to be a, an immigration out of bigger cities and back into communities, particularly as uh, we're figuring out that it, it's possible to have businesses run pretty smoothly where a lot of your staff is working remotely and that's been a new uh, experience. So right. throughout all of these past six months the takeaway is what are the best practices, what have we learned from it, uh, what can we do better you know as as the the healthcare uh, and economic crisis subsides and keep the best practices and, and, and grow from those and that's what we're doing. Well. Now, with all that information you've given everybody, sorry, <laughs> that's okay. You can watch it a second time and catch the rest of it. But uh, if you got anything else that we might want to make sure people know that's going on with the city, again, I just want to thank everybody who is dedicating their time and resources, uh, time and money are two of the most scarce things that we have, and we wouldn't have the quality of life here in Madison, Indiana, if it wasn't for all of you doing this fantastic work. Keep it up. And uh, again, um, thank you for all of your hard efforts. Well, as always, we greatly appreciate our sponsors that make all this possible. And we appreciate you watching. Looking for that special gift for your favorite outdoor enthusiast? Or for yourself? You'll find it here. DG Power Sports has all your outdoor sporting supplies and parts. We're located at 10390 Highway 421 North in Milton, Kentucky. We're just two miles from Madison, Indiana and only a short distance from the Dirty Turtle Off-Road Park in Dakota Racetrack. We are open Tuesdays through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I am Darren Gross. Thank you for your support and I look forward to seeing you.